watch guys it's empty inside just air watch double pockets guys i've never had a double one and this one is for you this one's for you chemo gamo fans look at that i'm about to make two different versions of this pizza that I've been wanting to make a long time by Chef Salvatore Lioniello, his recipe. And the two different methods are using either 100% biga for the first time. Biga is a pre-ferment. And that's what I have here. Or I'm going to compare it to the second method, which will be a three-day dough. Three-day dough using minimal amount of yeast. And we're going to compare what results I get. All right? Look at the biga now. This is 500 grams of flour using Selezione Casillo, guys. Very special Neapolitan flour. Manitoba flour, which is the strong flour. This allows for the biga to develop more flavor and also more elasticity. About 200 grams of regular pizza flour, special pizza flour. 300 grams of Manitoba flour, the strong flour. Then I have my dough here, and we're gonna throw in one gram of yeast. One gram of yeast that I'm going to dissolve in 250 grams of water, cold water. We're going to just, this is the Roberto Susta method. We're gonna just go like this. Make sure that it all just mixes well and we don't leave any, you don't need to do a lot of mixing, see kneading. Make sure you don't knead anything. Don't use too much pressure because you need the gluten to develop. Now what does the biga really help in? Why is it so important? This biga, this pre-ferment adds much more flavor to your dough. It also lets it rise. It's gonna rise higher. Okay, so now we're gonna just mix this up like this because it's gonna dry up. Okay, so after working it about five minutes without kneading it, just basically moving it, mixing it like this, I'm almost, I'm almost done incorporating all of the flour by itself. Leave the biga just like this. I'm gonna cover it up. All right, cover it up, and keep it in the coldest spot for about 24 hours, 16 to 24 hours. This is my first version of the dough. The other thing that you can do, if you like, is transfer this into a container, a smaller container, and then put it in the fridge. Put it in the fridge for 16 to 24 hours. Also, store it in the coldest spot. Uh, in the house at room temperature, but cold, cold spa, which is up to about 64 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit or up to 20 degrees Celsius max. The best is about 18, 18 degrees Celsius. So that's it. Okay, for now. See, look at that. Yeah. Perfect. That's how it stays for one day. And now I'm going to show you the second method, which is the direct dough. No pre-ferment, less yeast, and no strong flour. You just go to use one type of flour, which is this pizzeria flour, pizza flour, pizza flour from Bolino Casillo, Selezione Casillo. Okay. Again, 500 grams of flour. Okay. We're going to add 0.5 grams of yeast, only 0.5 grams of yeast, per the same amount of dough. 325 grams of water, so this is a direct dough. We're going to need more water than that later, but we're going to start with only 325 grams. And now we're going to add our pizza flour, about 500 grams here. This is just half of it. Let it 
stand for about 45 minutes. We switch places here. And watch what we're going to do. I'm just going to transfer this where we started to mix with our hands. Make sure I thoroughly mix this over it. That's it. And then we're just going to cover this up and let it develop some gluten. So I'm going to cover it up like this. After 45 minutes. Here it is. Let's see how much gluten it has developed by itself. See? There you go. So we have yeast, water, most of the water, and flour. Here. So here we have our dough that is rested. This is salt. 10 grams of salt we're gonna add. Alright. And this is 25 grams additional cold water that I'm gonna add very slowly, just a little at a time as I complete the dough. You don't want the dough to be too warm. Alright, so let's check the temperature. Right now it's 23 degrees, 23.3. You don't want it to be more than 26, 27, you know, 24, 25 ideally, Celsius. We're going to start mixing the dough. Put a little bit of water. Alright, add that, just a little. So, the total amount of water will be 350 grams. 500 grams of flour, which is 70% water. Notice it's getting very, very moist. You can increase the speed right now. So wait until, wait until it's completely absorbed, the water. You can also use a spray bottle to stop the dough. Let it rest for one minute, and then continue. Watch that, it's no longer sticking. Now let's see, it's about 26. Close this dough, we have very little water left, just a little left. We're going to add just a little bit, a little at a time. Just a little bit. It took us about 15 minutes. We're done with our dough, guys. First, I'm going to let it rest probably about an hour, an hour or two at room temperature covered. And then we're going to place it in the fridge and let it be there for about three days. Let's check. It's about 26 degrees, 27, 26.8 Celsius. And now let's just check just how elastic it is. All right, look. We're going to compare it. We're going to compare this to the 100% Biga dough with the pre-ferment. Just took out this dough, 70% hydration. All right, and just watch. Watch, see how elastic it is. I'm gonna give it some strength now. Just gonna give it some strength. All right, like so. I'm taping with my other camera, other hand, so I'm trying to use one hand here. All right, turn it this way perpendicularly. Third turn, stretch and fold. 
stretch and fold and look how beautiful this dough is. That's it. Very my direct authentic Neapolitan dough. Place it back in here, cover it up, one hour, place it in the fridge. That's it. 16 hours, cold temperature. This is my biga. We're gonna, no stress biga. That's our dough, basically. All we're gonna do is add some water to it. That's it. So, watch. I'm going to just add all of this into my mixer like so. We're going to add 1.5 grams of fresh yeast and 125 grams of water, cold water, little at a time, just a little bit at a time. Okay. And what's left? One more ingredient, salt. 10 grams of salt, but later, because you don't want it to be in contact with the yeast. All right, let's start at a slow speed. Slow speed. That's 10 grams of salt. Temperature, guys. Right now it's 22 degrees. We want to be at 24, 26, 26. That would be ideal when we close the dough. I stopped it and watch now. All right, it's about, wow, 20, no, it's 24.9 uh, because I wasn't pointing the, the, the dough. It's at 24, so you don't want to work it much longer than this. Just going to add two more milliliters of water. Just the last two more milliliters in order to arrive at 75% hydration. Guys, watch, watch. It's quite wet though, 100% bigger for the first time by Chemo Gemo. We're gonna let it rest and now we're gonna divide it up into three different pizza balls and we're gonna cook them later on tonight. Watch the consistency of the dough, 75%. Watch, 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 open up. All right, watch. Okay. Now, we're gonna bring it out onto the surface, give it a few folds, and then divide it up into three pieces. Sticky dough. So that's our dough. You can let it rest like this for about at least 15, 20 minutes. Now for the sake of this video, I'm just going to divide it up immediately. I don't have much time. All right, so it has rested for a little bit. Now we're going to just divide this up, guys. Into three parts. Measure how much this is. Two fifty-five. Oh, not bad at all, I would say. Uh, okay, let's see some other ones. Let's see how much dough we made here. This looks to be a little bit. 
bit too much. Watch how sticky that dough is. 257. <laughs> show. Show. 257. Takes practice, guys. The eyes, the hands. They receive sensory input. That's why when you cook, you cook with all your five senses. When you bake. I just form these into balls and store them. Okay, so how do you form them? You can have some oil on your hands. I don't use any oil. Just water. A little water if you don't want to stick. See, that's a little water. All right. But there, that's it. Just, that's one way to do it. Okay, perfect. Form it together like this. I think this is for this kind of hydration, this high hydration index, it's best to just work on it like this very quickly. Place it here. Perfect. And we cover it up. I'm going to use this eggplant to make my. Parmigiana scomposta, pizza secondo alla ricetta di Salvatore Lioniello, my favorite pizzaiolo. Okay, I have many favorites, but he's definitely a special, special pizzaiolo for me that I follow. I'm also using the dough recipe by Roberto Susta. All right, he has a famous pizza called Pizza Fiocco in uh, Napoli. And I just sliced these, very thin, very thin. That's the, we're gonna dry them in the oven. Low heat, low heat, see? There we go. And in the meantime, we have our tomatoes. Meanwhile, we have our tomatoes. Tomatoes confit. Slow roasted, slow roasted. Okay. There we go. Perfect. All right? And in the oven, guys. Now, this is what we're going to need for the cheese sauce, for this parmigiana, one of the most, most well-known Italian classic recipes that we're going to deconstruct. This is the parmigiana deconstructed pizza. 50 grams butter, 40 grams flour, we got 100 grams of grated cheese, we're going to add about 120 grams of cream, and 400 grams of milk, organic milk. That's all we're gonna need for this cream sauce, okay? So. Let's start add, adding the flour. Okay. And cream. Now the cream that I use has no additives has no additives at all. I'm a pharmacist, doctor of pharmacist, so I watch all the ingredients, my friends. Meaning that I find the products that have the least ingredients as possible. That's the cream, heavy cream, guys. Heavy cream with no added guams, nothing like that. Put some salt as well. And now, meanwhile, while this is cooking, I'm going to work on the pesto, the green part of this recipe. Okay, now, meanwhile, while the cheese sauce is de getting dense and cooking, cooking down, I have some pine nuts, Italian pine nuts. So I'm going to share with you some secrets for how to keep it green and very creamy. Here's one tip, for example. When you use your mixer or blender, don't use the highest speed. Be why? Because the more speed you use, the hotter it gets when the basil leaves are exposed to warm or the heat, warm temperature, very, a lot of heat, they tend to oxidize and they lose that green color. So all the ingredients you have, keep them cold. In fact, I have oil, extra virgin olive oil right here in the fridge that I'm gonna add. So come watch. Pulse, use this pulse. See, just use the pulse as much as you can when you do the pesto. 
Meanwhile, we're checking on my eggplant. Some of them are ready. So these three I'm gonna remove. These are gonna go back. So I have my pine nuts in there. And I added a little bit of salt as well. Now, what's the olive oil that I'm gonna use, guys? Watch, look at this olive oil. Look at this product. It's extra virgin olive oil from the Imperia region, okay? Olive Tajasca. Olive Tajasca. Very, very well known, highest quality. One of the highest quality olive oil you can get. We're gonna drop in. There's one ingredient, one secret ingredient that many will tell you about. And I've watched one of the best chefs in the world, Massimo Bottura, talk about this. You add ice, one ice cube, just one, one or two. Here's the magic secret, guys, to keep it cold. Just one ice cube, all right? This is the olive oil from the fridge. It's been there for hours. Now, for the emulsification to happen, you need to start adding this as you mix. That's how green it should be. To make it thick is going to be this cheese. We're gonna cook it down for about 10 minutes now. Okay, 100 grams of... Parmigiano. After 15 to 20 minutes, the Parmigiano cream sauce is done. That's the consistency that it should be. And it's going to harden even more as it cools now because we want it to be at room temperature once we put it on the pizza. And that oven right there in our backyard is waiting, waiting to be flavored, seasoned with this deconstructed Parmigiana pizza. Guys, show them. That's the 100% Biga, 75% hydration bowl.
here's the cheese cream. And now I'm gonna add plant chips. This is the cheese sauce. Everybody's gonna get a little bite of this cheese. And now, guys, the Italian colors. Let's see, 100% bigger. Potatoes. All right, let's get this piece here, okay? Let's look at it. Go. That's the piece for you guys. Now, this is the second day uh, that this dough, the direct three day dough, has been in the fridge. I just took it out of the fridge about an hour ago. There we go. Here it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate it into three separate individual pizza balls and I'm going to put it back in the fridge immediately and let it ferment the last the third day I want it to ferment individually and then tomorrow when we bring it out of the fridge in four hours or so four to six hours after I take it out of the fridge we're going to just bake them it has less yeast much less yeast actually only 0.5 grams so now what I'm going to do is going to just stretch it out like so. And cut it off like that. All right. It's quite wet dough. So the difference between this dough and the other one is this one is also 70% hydration. So it's not as light. Just gonna form a ball like so. One. We're gonna place them back in the fridge. No need to wait. We're gonna let it ferment at room temperature tomorrow. There we go. Those are our. Okay, it's not gonna need a lot of slapping here. Watch. You don't want to. What we're going to do is just. Turn it. Just maybe a couple of slaps and that's it. And one more. And that's it. We have a beautiful round. Maybe one more. That's it. Now.
stick. Perfect. 400, about 40 Celsius. extra cheese. Maybe also can go like this. Need some green, I think, right? Olive oil. Let's add just a little bit of olive oil. And our first pizza is done. Let's look at the back. Very well done, guys. Very well. And look at how look at how soft it is. Let's cut it right now while it's hot. This first one. Watch guys, it's empty inside, just air. All the way through. Watch. Double pockets, guys. I've never had a double one. And this one is for you. This one is for you, Chemo Gemo fans. Look at that. You can fold it up and just eat it. Now, not only is the dough very light here, but I let it stand a little bit too long. I let it go about five hours instead of four hours. At home, guys, when you do this recipe, make sure when you take it out of the fridge, look at it. It shouldn't be standing at room temperature too long because then it becomes too bubbly. Now it becomes a little bit more difficult to manage, you see? I don't even need to slap it or extend it at all, see? See, that's it. I have a beautiful round circle. Just with one movement or two, I'm gonna take it outside. That's it.
We did it. We did it, guys. Chemo Gamo. Three-day dough. Which one do you like more? The three-day dough or the 100% Biga? 75% hydration. This is 70%. It's a tough call, but I'm very happy. This is the pizza that I dreamed about making for a long time. Thank you to Salvatore Lioniello. Thank you to Roberto Susta and all of you guys who make pizza. Whether or not you're a world pizza champion, pizza champion, or ones that are trying to perfect and master this art at home. Follow Chemo Gemo, guys. Let's cut into it now. Look at how soft it is, guys. The three days makes a difference. But this one's gonna have two eggplant pieces, guys. Two eggplant chips. These are not just pieces. They're eggplant chips. Look at that. Just look at that, guys. Look at that air. Look at the air on this one. And this one's for you. This one is for you, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching, my friends at Chemo Gamo. Let me show you the main character. This is the protagonist. This is the protagonist of this whole, whole pizza experiment. 100% Biga pre-ferment versus a three-day dough. And this is the chip. And we're gonna just do the crunch test. All right, first of all, it breaks. Let's take a photo.